knowledge for College Tribune. In this podcast, we will address three interconnected issues. First will be the negative freedom, or the freedom from, as it is called. The second will be erasing of the past, or an attempt to negate, totally negate and annihilate past, something that is very frequent subject on our project. And the third will be the notion of divine justice in its retributory uh, aspect and how this notion, which is ha- very hard to comprehend, is seem to be secularized and appropriated today. So let us start uh, with a negative freedom. Uh, we'll refer to ongoing uh, ongoing riots in England, USA, and some other Western European uh, and <laughs> transatlantic, of course, uh, countries uh, that give give us a pretty good canvas. Uh, in black and white, with the, with the images in black and white, so that we can put some paint on, so we can uh, better comprehend uh, what uh, the causes of uh, what is going on. Uh, I think this is far better uh, than try to give some kind of uh, factual account, because as I tend to repeat uh, often. Uh, media image, uh, is, uh, be it uh, alternative or mainstream media image, is not a good uh, foundation for factual analysis of something. Now, negative freedom of, or freedom from is customarily understood as being freedom that is advocated by liberalism in both its classical and its ideological form. Uh, I would say that it goes deeper. Uh, than that. Uh, This is how we'll define it. Uh, The freedom from is the idea, that is to say the principle, uh, that rests upon this statement. You are free to do everything as long as it does not uh, encroach on uh, somebody else's freedom. So this is a uh, freedom that uh, does not give you a uh, definition of what you should do or what uh, you maybe are free to do but it's not necessary to do but only uh, what you shouldn't do and everything that is uh, out of this shouldn't is uh, uh, valid Now, this is the kind of freedom that is today, as much as I can observe, used by the, by people who are raising their voice uh, against the so-called protest, but in fact riots uh, happening in said countries. And so the typical situation looks like this. Uh, Somebody who has his or her sanity about his, him or her, uh, is uh, trying to point out that uh, people are quite entitled to protest because protest in itself, according to this principle, does not harm anyone. And never taking into account, uh, do they really pro- are they really protesting about something real or unreal? Just that uh, they are not entitled to encroach on other people's freedom in the form of uh, breaking their bones, bashing their heads in, taking down monuments, uh, and uh, 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 defacing buildings, and so on and so forth. Now, the problem with this is that the freedom Uh, that drives these uh, protests-riots, slash riots, and the freedom that is just being invoked to counter them intellectually is the completely same uh, principle of freedom. That is to say, they have the same root, and this root is negativity. It is the negative root. 
And this, I would uh, boldly state, is a huge uh, underlying problem that uh, is present throughout a very long time for a uh, modern reckoning because we reckon uh, reckon time is much shorter intervals uh, than our predecessors did so let's say that this is the ruling principles of at least uh, in a in a global s sense in, in in the symbolism of of uh, good and bad uh, that is accepted by most people, at least in the West. It, it rules for decades from, I would say, roughly after the Second World War. So the people who are trying to annihilate their past by defacing uh, the statue of Winston Churchill, for instance, uh, probably having in mind that Winston Churchill was uh, not a saint, and uh, him not being a saint, that is to say, not being pure from any kind of secular sin they want to eradicate, uh, deserves to be forgotten. Uh, forgetfulness uh, is something uh, that erases the past in one's uh, soul, because the memory is the psychic that is to say psychological, but I say psychic because I consider soul to be a real entity, not, not simply a symbol for uh, something that is coming from organism, but it is a real entity, is, 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 is a memory. So trying to erase the memory would be trying to erase the past. Of course, past cannot be really erased, I would say, because past exists... Uh, whether it is remembered or not, here I would not share uh, this humanistic uh, notion that uh, good people continue to live in our memories. Nothing lives in memories, only memories lives in memory. And memory is very important for every person, but person is an incommunicable being. That is to say, it is something that is peculiar, uh, peculiar to each and every one. You cannot really keep other persons in existence uh, by your own, by you remembering them. This is very important to understand, but this is, to an extent, a different and more profound subject matter. And now this this is obviously a pure negativity. When you want to uh, destroy uh, destroy what lies at the foundation of the present, because uh, past is uh, in ontological, even metaphysical terms, dare I say theological, uh, the mode of being uh, that is symbolized by the cause or by the origin by what is first and uh, negative freedom therefore is obvious uh, impetus to destroy the causality which it cannot appropriate because you cannot change the past you cannot change for instance who Winston Churchill was what Great Britain was what USA was what any country and people was and consequently, you cannot remove all the warts <laughs> all those historical entities have. But I think that people who are now rioting uh, in in a complete abandon, in a complete desolation, uh, spiritual desolation, uh, wants in fact something far 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 deeper. Uh, they don't, I would posit, care about uh, about evil deeds of their ancestors. They care about not having ancestors at all. This is the essence of negative freedom. Encountering this negative freedom with a more temperate, uh, tempered negative freedom, as is the one that says that they are entitled to their opinion, but that they have to uh, 
consider the boundaries of their actions that they cannot they can just protest in the in the in the civilized manner and so on is a complete misfire because of con congeniality the freedom i think it becomes it should start to become clearer uh, comes from affirmation not of negation because every negation logically uh, must be founded upon affirmation you cannot bring uh, uh, something from nothing at least if you are not god and i don't see much of god among those protesters or rioters or however we'll call them so this kind of uh, this kind of uh, modern liberal standpoint is doomed in the face of this uh, drive to annihilation and ultimately self annihilation. Uh, I would just add that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I would just add that. Uh, we have to bear in mind that there is no moral value in this. So that these are not misguided people that are appalled by some kind of evil uh, that they have on the, their, their heads because of their ancestors. Uh, I don't think so. They are people who want to recreate themselves, to make a clean slate. And this is not new, revolutionaries always did this. But what is what I find interesting is that these are mostly, in my estimation, uh, a middle, middle social strata people uh, that lead probably quite sheltered lives that are not in any way, uh, shape or form, radicals. They are spearheaded by radicals but then their cells are not and uh, uh, what they are doing is uh, trying to destroy the foundation of their the the safety net uh, that is uh, under the, their asses uh, probably from their birth and these things come about always in the guise of uh, fighting for the cause of uh, being selfless but it is in fact the ultimate of selfishness because it's a kind of an attempt to transcend comfort to something higher than comfort that is to say to have uh, besides your middle class, middle social strata uh, life and securities, that now you have also this radical, uh, uh, radical freedom of the bloodthirsty animal, maybe. Because violence, especially this kind of mindless violence, is animalistic. It's not... Uh, it's not the violence uh, that is institutionalized in police or army or something like that, where violence unfortunately has a function and is necessary. Apparently not, for from what I see for British police, uh, violence is mostly upon them. So I don't. I say this because I think there ha should be no sympathy and no uh, understanding. For these people there is no reason for this this is very important no outside reason besides uh, uh, the reasons of their own deliberation of their own wish to do something uh, that they deem will make them in a sense more powerful i would say more more free and ultimately free from themselves because being free from the past means being free from yourself nobody should try to pull that off because the abyss in which you fall is the abyss of annihilation there is no bottom to it and i don't doubt that great majority of the masses in these countries of for instance, England, Ireland, for instance, that people are really brainwashed in, brainwashed themselves into this uh, for years, and that there is no uh, no nothing redemptive about them because to uh, wake up from this state and realizing how far you gone, I think this that shame 
and the realization of one's own uh, abandon would be too great for them to handle because those are people that can't handle uh, offensive Twitter posts. Imagine how would they handle uh, the insight into their own nothingness and, and corruption. Those insights are not easy, even with strong-willed people, because we all have these uh, corruptive, uh, corruptive part of our essence. This, these, this evil. Uh, let me let's not say sinful part of ourselves that part not merely part but something that is in our essence together with uh, its original good and even if you are what what I call one might call a good man that is to say man who tested his own uh, or her own uh, that's not man woman <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, his or her own uh, well let's say, goodness, uh, that person uh, had some real trials in his life. Uh, because th this never comes easy. No matter how good man you are, goodness, you become good through this, through this struggle with yourself and the world. Uh, these people, from what I see, never struggled with anything uh, more than putting the complaint uh, over bad service in a restaurant or something like that. These people are, I think, realistically speaking, not metaphysically speaking, not capable of redeeming themselves because uh, one that should redeem them, the only one that can put them on this way of, of coming to senses are themselves. I think they are, they are too weak for this. And that uh, police <laughs> will have, in the future, will have to act differently. And by this I mean uh, using quite an euphemism for something I was predicting for this part of uh, developed Europe uh, for a long time now. I mentioned it a few times before. That is uh, that the only way in which this self-annihilation will cease is the radical way. So the further it goes, uh, the more radical the swing of pendulum will be, if there will be any swing of the pendulum, but it's in the nature of pendulum that when you swing it, <laughs> it comes back. So it probably happened. Uh, and I was uh, usually uh, saying this in the context of my country and and uh, other continent, these middle to eastern Europe countries, uh, po mostly post-communist countries, where this lunacy had never really took uh, root, as in the West. Uh, and we are also we are regularly <coughs> looked upon as more right wing or blah blah blah. The right wing of the future for the West will be nothing, will be so right that it will fall off, <laughs> off the cliff of the right, right left uh, dichotomy or right left peak, if we can imagine it that way. Because there is no other way to go. Because there is no way that people can wake up uh, from these delusions. And the only way to assure uh, survival of societies, uh, despite th those were very economically strong and militarily strong societies, this is inner, uh, inner, inner destruction. And any only way to stop it would will be, I'm afraid, a radical, ra a, a, a radical right politics of the future, and something that will not be classical fascism, I think, or something like that. Uh, because the mere incorporation of the people in the state of economy and politics in the state and uh, uh, education, uh, something that was originally a fascist drive, uh, this uh, attempt to resolve this unity incorpor uh, incorporating, will not be enough. Uh, because uh, fascism, among other things, uh, requires... Uh, 
well this this uh, sentiment of uh, belonging and so on and so forth nothing uh, as bad as the fascism is it must uh, it must uh, take root into at least something good to grow uh, same applies to every system but i think there is nothing good to 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 take hold to uh, <coughs> uh, at all so this comes this uh, gets us to the third subject or the third aspect of a subject because i think as you see they are more or less congenial and this is this idea of divine justice i had one podcast a few months ago about something along these lines about revolutionary uh, by uh, uh, whereby I interpreted uh, a bit of uh, the Meister's uh, uh, the Meister's idea about this because he wrote extensively about this uh, uh, about divine retribution that is uh, enacted upon whole peoples and individuals is very contentious in modernity especially for people of this liberal mindset that are using this negative freedom to explain everything and because the idea is that uh, no matter uh, as a, as a member for instance of of, of ethnic group that went into uh, out of the deep end went against god or even the descendant of people who did it, uh, you get punished nonetheless. And this is a subject uh, that is one of those uh, one of those principles that you can never clearly explain. You always feel there is something to it. Uh, common sense, especially in more backwards societies as is uh, the one i live in backwards in inverted commas of course especially in rural parts <laughs> people have this uh, as a kind of common sense uh, uh, even in their private lives when you look at families and there is this idea that there are families who brought evil upon themselves for the evil deeds they well it, it can get so far that uh, we can say that people say there are families who who brought this, it on themselves because they were good so they get cursed for their goodness but this is this is this would be going going too far in the dark dark waters of the fringe understand uh, fringe phenomenon of evil uh, we won't go into that <clears throat> but what I see here, so this is the principle uh, that has uh, that has truth in it, but you can never really explain it away, and there is a reason why. Uh, the Meisters, Joseph the Meister, uh, gave this image that kind of gives you not explanation, but only the symbol through which you can understand this. Uh, you are standing on the ship and moving as you like, but the ship is moving its own way, or you are standing on Earth and Earth is rotating. This is uh, how, along the lines, that this should be understood. Because, as the Master says, any evil has to be recompensated. Uh, but uh, the greater the evil is, the harder it is to compensate for it by human actions, uh, let alone individual actions. And he had in mind, for instance, French Revolution. So, uh, people who get caught up in those events and participate at least uh, by their wills, by their willful acceptance of them, put themselves on the trajectory of the punishment. And the punishment is the fulfillment of their wishes this is very important idea and there, there is i think a lot of truth in it and uh, like the meister said nobody could punish uh, jacobins in his mind by 
but Jacobins themselves. And he doesn't mean only terror uh, that, uh, that, that took heads of a good deal of Jacobin leaders, original leaders, as is uh, customarily in revolutions. Uh, but also their revolution ending up being uh, the polar opposite of what they intended to be. And there is, I think there is a lot of truth to it. But we won't go too deep into trying to give a, an account of something that is so deep. I will just explain why I uh, pointed it out in this context. Uh, the whole of these negative freedom freaks are in fact trying to enact divine justice upon humankind. Uh, mostly on the white race. So they take a race, the lowest common denominator that differentiates people, the completely quantifiable, quantitative principle of materialistic principle of individuation that they, by the way, say that is not real, but it is in their uni intellectual universe the only real thing. They take this and want to enact a collective revenge. What they are doing, in fact, most of them, because most of them are white people, uh, is to enact revenge upon themselves. It is obvious. And in this enacting of revenge, which, which is even more absurd, they are trying to extricate themselves from the others that are same as them. Uh, which is a contradictory move, but it is uh, quite logical. This is quite logical contradiction. And whereas uh, in logic, contradiction annihilates, uh, annihilates the inference and logical process, in reality, in, it annihilates everything. And annihilation or the process of destroying is a real process. Never mind it is contradictory. It is very contradictory to twist somebody's arm from its natural position, but it's the only way to break the arm. So it's quite, uh, and this is the way to cause the real suffering for the owner of the said arm. And this is, I think, what is happening now. Uh, this is unredeemable, unredeemable instance or the collective act of people considering them gods and trying to punish themselves while feeling no pain of punishment because the punishment is of course intended to be virtual uh, no one of those people who are bending a knee or doing whatever acts of, of humility and then breaking statue or, uh, or statues or policemen heads and none of those people can bear the even an ounce of discomfort in their lives because everything they do is uh, motivated by their self love and indulgence self indulgence that but what is interesting is that their self-indulgence uh, is so hypertrophied and so over the top that now it turns upon itself. And I would make a cautious prediction uh, that uh, there will be some form, I cannot of course predict uh, which form, of self-destruction on mass scale in the aftermath of this. Uh, of course, as I said, uh, I cannot be sure how this will look. But I think that will suffice for now. Uh, thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune, signing out. Mm -hmm.